Hi, good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us. Um, this is the first webinar of Career Goals Club. We had a welcome party last week, Sunday, and today is our first professional webinar. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Webinar Khadija. of Career Goals Club. We had a welcome party last week, Sunday, and today is our first professional webinar. Today, I'm pleased to welcome Webinar of Okay, apologies, sorry for that. We're back. So today we are, we're pleased to have Khadija Thomas. She is the owner of Caribbean Women in Business. Khadija started to help small businesses in Barbados and has branched out to help to start helping regional brands. Khadija is the founder of Caribbean Women in Business, a platform which is geared towards promoting Caribbean female owned and operated businesses. Khadija is willing and ready to share with us for one hour today on the Career Goals Club. So if you are here, it means one, you are a member and two, you're willing to learn. So to ask questions or to make comments, you can make comments or questions in the YouTube chat and we will bring them up on the screen and share them as much as we can. So before we begin, we are gonna do some shout outs. So thank you for joining Ria. I see Shigari, Ria Ellis, thank you for joining. Kimberly Barker is out there, shout out to Kimberly as well, and Dishanika is here as well as well. So thank you very much for joining. Uh, we're going to have Khadija on the live now. All right, so thanks for coming Khadija. Sure, no problem. Thank you so much for having me and good evening ladies. All right, so today we're talking about how to start a business and how to brand it most importantly. So I would have mentioned that you work with some small businesses locally and with a lot of regional brands. Could you tell us a little bit more about yourself and the brands that you've worked with? Okay, so basically I started out doing this from a family business actually. So my parents, when I was in secondary school, decided that they bought this one Z environment. And basically my idea was, well, we got a van, how do I make it? how do I make work for this one? How do I make this into something? And then I started reaching out from school to my, my school. I went to Dighton Griffith and I went to my principal and I was in there like a whole brand ambassador, you know, I trying to, to sign contracts and stuff and I am only in full form. And I there trying to get um, contracts for taking out students, football teams, all sorts of things, whatever tours the school had. And that's where it really started. And eventually business grew and grew and then started getting the tour buses and stuff like that. And basically from there, I started to get people asking, you know, who's who asking my parents, who's doing this, who's doing that? Who's the person behind all of this marketing? Who's the person? So it started to branch off from there and started working with some small companies and started working with like persons who wanted to open salons and stuff like that, friends that wanted to start car businesses and stuff like that. I started um, working with, and then I went into working for like Sunshine Snacks and Charles Chocolates, Tropical Delight, a couple of other companies that we would have worked with in trying to make their brand out there. And I started having friends who were managers and stuff of some of these top um, companies and regional companies who then started asking me, Khadija, what do I do? Where do I go right now? Oh, ho, oh, my sales are dropping. What should I do? So basically that's where it started and that's how I started helping people. And that's why I started to make it into this, what it is now and the Caribbean Women in Business page. So let's talk a little bit about your platform. So uh, for those of you who don't follow, the handle is Caribbean Women in Business, and it's a platform geared at promoting um, basically female-founded businesses in the Caribbean. What would have given the idea to come up with this concept? So I, I felt as though there needed to be something out there for women. And the problem that the one thing that i can fault myself for is i started to delete like after i would put out the businesses and stuff i would have deleted some of them so now in this phase i'm 
making certain that when we do promote your business, we're going to leave it up so that persons can always find it. Are we going to put them in the highlights so that persons can always go through and search for them? But is that I wanted to them to be something out there so that women who really just want to help other women to grow and to be out there, they know that there's somewhere they can go and find one of women's women's own business. They will be own businesses, I should say. That's fantastic. So we have a couple of women who are on right now who I know are owners of businesses, but there may be some individuals in the career goals club. I have to say individuals because now we have males in the club who oh, wow. are interested in starting a business. Can you walk us through um, what, what are the basics? Because the club is regional. What are the basics that we need to know for starting our own business now, especially during Corona? Mm -hmm. Okay, so generally what I would have done, guys, and if you see me reading, it's because my mind can be very shattered when I'm thinking about everything and it may not get it all together. So I started to jot down all the stuff that I wanted to touch on with you guys today because... I know that we can touch on everything in an hour, but the very basics, because the fact that you're in a career goals club, it doesn't mean that you're looking to work for someone. We all know entrepreneurship is a career path also. So for those of you who have an idea, we're going to look at how to bring your idea to reality. The little, the little things that you need to look at, because always remember that whatever we discuss here today isn't all there is to business. Let's put that first disclaimer out there. Okay, so idea to reality, right? So first thing you need, and I will always tell persons, always have a vision for your company. Know where you would like to see your company in five years. And I know sometimes it's not always easy, and I will always say you don't need to have it all together. I've been telling people, so I know so many persons who want to start a business, but you're trying to get all the nitty gritties together before you start. You do not need to do that. And generally, you can come up with your business in a weekend. Just sit down and be motivated and dedicated to what you want to do, and you can do it in a weekend. So have your vision. Where do you want to see your business? What's your, what's your business, first of all? And where would you like to see it going? And then you need to ask yourself things like, do I need a startup capital? What is necessary for my company to operate? So what equipment do you need? What human resources do you need? And be real with yourself. Ask yourself, would I enjoy doing this in five years' time? And if not, where do I need to put my business? What would I like to see happening? And know that in five years, I will still be motivated to do this and get up and do this every day. And generally, for all, as you or anybody, if you're doing any business, you have to know what's the purpose of your business. If you don't have a purpose, you really and truly cannot move your business forward because you will not see value in your business. So ask yourself, what's the purpose in my business? What benefits or problems am I solving for anyone? What makes me unique as a company? What emotional need am I serving? Am I going to try to make someone feel beautiful? Am I looking to pull on my customer service and know that every time someone comes to my my let's say you have a salon to my salon I know that this is they're going to look forward to me because my personality so I know that for my personality okay so let me just say for me I go to my 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 lash tech and every time I go to her I look forward to going to her just for the conversation that we are going to have and whether it be about business, egos, whether it be about energies, whatever it may be, I look forward to going there for that conversation. So whenever you um, whenever you're doing your business, look at those little things. What am I offering? What makes me, what makes my business unique? And obviously, if you have to look at that, you need to know who, who you're targeting. It's very important. Who am I targeting? You need to know their gender, their age, their career type. Am I targeting an entrepreneur? Am I targeting someone who works a nine to five? Am I targeting, uh, you know, whoever you're targeting, is it a business person, is it an entrepreneur? Because you need to know them when to do your marketing. You see, it's very important when it comes to your marketing because you need to know where that person is, how to get to that person, and what you need to do in order to communicate with that person. So, 
in doing all of that, you need to ask yourself, who is my ideal client? Who is that client that when they walk into my business, I'm going to say, oh my God, I made it, I done it, yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, is that person Mia for you? And if it's Mia, how are you going to target Mia? You know Mia, the only, Mia ain't really sitting down like the casual person and scrolling through Instagram. True. So how am I going to target her? So you always need to know who your target is. Is my target a high-end person? Is my target a casual person? But at no point in time, I expect to hear someone say to me, I targeting everybody because you will not, you will not win that battle. That's the sad truth. When you target everybody, you you try to you're trying to hit everywhere. The sad reality about business is you will never please everybody. True. And unless you get real comfortable, you need to find peace with that real quick. For the time you're starting a business, get comfortable with the fact that you will not please everybody. But you need to know who your target is because those are the persons you need to please. And it's very important to make sure and find out how you're going to do that. So in doing that, the most important thing then you have to look at is what makes me different from my competition? Okay. You need to analyze your competition. So what are they offering? Are they offering the same things that I am looking to offer? Or are they offering something a little different? Something from there that I may want to pull on. But always remember, be original in some aspect. Your originality will help you the most. What are, your, what are their prices like? Their prices, so... And when I say look at someone's prices, I think people get really complacent in looking at prices and think that you have to match everybody's price. Correct. Always know the worth of your brand. And even if you compromise on it a little bit, make sure there's so little that you can really realize this compromise. So know your worth. Know the worth of your brand. And because your competition is offering it at... Let's say 30 cents, that doesn't mean you need to offer it at 30 cents. Let's look at popular and massy. Popular may offer something really cheap, but you know what? Massy, you know, it goes for its value. It goes for its standards. So when people look at even now in COVID times, they're looking at the fact of how do I protect my family? Do I want to go in popular and standard in these lines where people are so close together? No. I know that when I go to Massey, Massey have all these lines laid out. Massey's continuously over the intercom speaking, saying all of these protocols. They're doing all of this, and you know these are the things, and these are the reasons why you will go to Massey instead of popular, right? So it's yeah. very important. Know your worth. Know, I, know your business worth. I'm actually mm -hmm. glad that you raised that point, um, Khadija. I I knew, um, I noticed about two weeks ago when Burger King and KFC started to do delivery, a lot of people were pressuring Halu and the Chafet brand to start delivery, but... Yeah. Um, you know, the owner was saying, you know, they're not ready. They don't have all the systems in place. And people thought it was a hoax. But um, mm -hmm. what what are your thoughts on that whole, um, you know, bringing out, bringing out your services or trying to diversify when you're actually ready? No, honestly, I mean, sometimes we can look in this market and we can see so many persons coming out with the same thing you're coming out with. But let me tell you something. When you and you know that you have everything put together and even if you look at KFC, KFC now they're receiving so much bad marketing I you know some people say marketing is marketing but it's still important to look at the certain marketing you're getting correct it doesn't make sense getting bad press because when Shafet brings out that delivery service I'm telling you you can trust and believe that that thing can be top notch yeah, I, not I, actually, I actually see people reposting the car and reposting it going on a test drive, and I saw it being branded. So there's I no anticipation awaiting yeah. the delivery service. Exactly. So you remember when I started, I said to you guys, you don't need to have everything together. Right. But the reason I said that is because you can start something and you can start by, by creating an anticipation for what you're having. So you know you want to start a business. Start to put something out there because that something will help motivate you when you see that persons are actually interested in what you're offering. Start by just putting some little something out there. Start to drizzle, as some people say. 
create that anticipation for your brand, for your business. And that will also help to motivate you. Because I know sometimes in business planning, it can get so strenuous and you can start to lose faith. And when you do, when you go and you start and you do all this planning, I always tell people, create that anticipation. Because when you go and you start and you get this finished, after you went through all that stressful process, and you start and then realize you ain't gotten the clients, trust me, that can knock you out of the sea. Sure. Make sure to start creating anticipation for your brand. So, Khadija, before we go ahead, mm. how do you create that kind of anticipation where clients or customers that you are you aren't even paying to market your brand or marketing yeah. for you? How do you create such an appetite like how Shafat is able to do in Barbados? So, it's well, Shafat has. Shafat has a legacy. Let's just say that one, first of all. But generally, you can, right now we're in everywhere social media. It is our best friend. I mean, make the most out of it. I cannot sit down and listen to someone tell me they cannot get their business or they're not starting this business or no hotel because you see social media, it runs for us. It runs for us. And we are on our phones 24-7 start by doing it start learning how to do um social media marketing and when you start to put your business out there you go there and you see that then i have to even speak to you about branding branding is the next thing we have to talk about but that branding is very important as you will see shafet sticks by its branding shafet didn't just come up with any other any little car shafet ain't come and just try and get three people to come and do delivery service and they worry about how to dress branding is important so whenever you go and you try to start up whatever you're starting up make sure you have your branding covered but we are going to talk about branding branding is something that is on my list to talk about but if you want to do that uh, a lot of people i don't know if you you're going to cover it on your list but a lot of people think that branding is expensive or mm -hmm. spending time on branding when you're initially starting out is a is kind of like time consuming um yeah are you cover that or well really? yeah but well yeah we can but okay. branding yes it is it can be very time consuming but the same thing with the shafet method don't rush it because if you rush and put something out there you gotta be real careful you gotta look at the quality of what you're putting out there but your branding is very important so don't go and try to start something and don't have your branding started out. So that's why even when you're doing your business plan, and you see when I started, I asked you about the capital that was necessary, and the, 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 what was necessary to start your business. So what equipment, what resources, whatever was important. So you may realize that you need the capital to start that. So you can start putting like little money once, like to say, all right, let me go. But no, first of all, you need to find out costing. So you need to go and you need to do it. It's a lot of surveying, it's a lot of analysis that comes into being when it comes to creating a brand and creating a business. It's not for lazy, it's not lazy work. True. So you need to go and find out who's going to offer you the best service at the best price that you need, but not compromising on your quality. Because don't let money make you a fool. Yeah. Oh, don't compromise because sometimes yes, somebody may be expensive, but that body's expensive because they know the quality of what they are offering. They know they're going to get that to you in a good time. So always make sure have your your, your branding covered. And I guess we can just we can jump to the little things that are very really important in branding because I did have those things um jot down too to touch on. So in branding, um Jamila, give me one minute. Here. Light. Sorry, guys. That's going to just turn on light so you guys can see. So, well, Khadija turns off the lights. Um, if you are here and you aren't a member of the club, make sure to follow the Career Goals Club on Instagram at careergoals.club. And if you haven't signed up for the club, you can click the link in the bio and register for the club going forward. The webinars will only be for club members. It's a private club. So these resources are free to club members only. So make sure you sign up after this webinar. Go ahead, Khadija. Hi, you're back to me? Yeah, we're back to you. Oh, okay, great. So as I said, even if we jump into the branding, when you're looking at your branding, the things that are very important to look at, your logo. And your logo can have a story behind it. 
You can have a simple one or you can have something that tells a story. You can have, and on our, even our Caribbean Women in Business, you would have seen me really rebranded recently this week itself. And our new logo was, to, was, was with a story. So it's women going towards their target. Okay? So yeah. then you have to look at your color scheme. What colors are you using? Because colors are so important. People don't even realize it, but colors can mess with someone's mood. So the colors that you decide to use, they're very important. We have a question from, from YouTube. Kimberly Barker is asking a question. What about the legalities of launching a business and branding? What is needed to be done and advice on NAS and mm -hmm. on entrepreneurs, I believe she say. So yeah. th that's kind of like three questions. So what about the legalities of launching a business and branding? That's the first one. Right. So I always advise anybody when you're when you're starting a business, look into all of those things. Because let's say you want to start by doing something with vapes or something like that. You need to know all the legal things that you need to cover. So you need to go and look at your legislation. Where are you brand, where are you selling your product? Is this something that you want to go and take regional? Is this something you want to take international? Because whatever you're doing, you always need to look for the laws of the country in which you are looking to produce your product. And um, branding is very important because even if, like, let's say you see a lot of people that are advertising party, you will see them put a song on the radio. So really, actually, they go and look at copyrights and stuff like that. So whenever you're putting out something with your brand, you need to make sure you have all your ends and bases covered. Whatever you're putting out there, make sure you're legally correct in doing so because the lawsuit that could come is going to be pretty. You may find sometimes that somebody may come and say, you know, all right, whatever, I can get it easy, maybe get a warning letter. Also, the next thing you need to look at if it's to very much so, read the FTC's rules and regulations for businesses. You need to know your um you need to know consumer rights because generally if you go out there and you start a business and you are unfair to someone and you may not even realize that you are being unfair to some to a consumer. So read up on all these things, know your consumer rights know the legislation regarding to whatever it is that you're doing and with reference to NIS and stuff like that, guys, make sure to always pay your NIS. Even if you're an entrepreneur, look into it because we never know what may happen. Look at now with the coronavirus. Come on, guys. There's so many people that now are so happy that they were paying NIS to be able to go now and say, well, you know what? My business right now has had to close down, so I am right now filing for unemployment. You need to always make sure you have your ends covered. I see Kim putting on her thumbs up, so I'm guessing that I did answer her question to some extent. Yeah, um, um, to your question as well, Kim, uh, regarding NAS, I know there was a lot of conversation on social media and Facebook from self-employed persons who had not been paying um, basically any funding to NAS, and now we're during COVID, they had basically no money coming in, no, no income. And as Khadija said, you, you, you can't foresee these things happening. So it's always good to have a safety net where you pay in your NAS as a self-employed person. We have another question from Melissa. Okay. Okay, so you reading Melissa's question? Yeah. What advice would you give to people who would start marketing, what advice would you give for people who would start marketing to persons on their personal IG page, but would have a problem transferring those people into customers or even to the business page? So, so I, I, go ahead. Right, so I know a lot of persons do start on their personal page. It's one way, but I would generally always advise persons, if you're starting something, that's why I always say, if you're starting, start right. Start right one time. I mean, guide your friends, guide your customers. If they're your customers, you need to make sure that whatever it is you're offering, they want it so much that they're going to follow whatever page you put out there, your business page. That's why I always say, you need to know what you're offering and what is unique about what you're offering. How are you getting your customers to follow your brand? You see how Luke move all the way up um, <laughs> Lancaster, and people are going all up Lancaster, right? You. <laughs> exactly. So you need to know how to get people to follow your brand. So find out, Melissa, you need to find out exactly, 
I don't know if it's you personally, but I mean, we can even talk about it after or whatever. And guys, if you guys do have any questions, please um, feel free to even send me the email or you can send me an email at caribbeanwomeninbusiness at gmail.com. You can go to the page, go on the page on Instagram, and you can send us the questions there. We will be happy to assist you guys. And we do have um, a lot of courses that we're going to be launching out in this coming week. Thanks to Jamila for pushing me into actually going out there and launching these courses to offer this to people because I was doing it on a very low scale. Like, as I told you guys, people were here, they were asking questions, and that's how it will go from there. But generally, now we are actually going to be offering a lot of um, courses and even helping you to develop your business, how to go about doing your business, and how to the basic things that you need to know. So even the things that we are covering here, we are going to look at how to do that for your business. So I would advise everybody to follow the page on Instagram so for the coming um, courses that we are offering. And our prices are always very reasonable because we are offering them for women. So we want each one to be successful in it. So our prices are very reasonable. Okay, see so the next question here, Jamila. Oh, and I ask you as well for entrepreneurs. Okay, so with reference to the, oh, so the question was to explain how NIS payments go for entrepreneurs. So in terms of the NIS payments for the entrepreneurs, I would advise you to contact NIS directly. Because right. what you need to, your payments and all of that, I cannot talk to you about that because I don't work for NIS. And I would not want to give you any wrong information where that is concerned. Jimmy, I don't know if you have any comments. Yeah, um, entrepreneurs, you can pay your NAS on a quarterly basis. You can pay it monthly or quarterly at a rate of 17.1% of your earnings. So basically, if your minimum earnings is $21, um, it's from minimum earnings of $21 to maximum earnings of $1,126 $1, per week, you're required to pay 17.1% of that. So whatever your income is, your NAS contribution is 17.1%. Um, Zaria, I think that you are in the Career Goals Club, so I will post the link um, to the NAS website where that information can be found. Right. Okay, so as I was, as we can jump back then into the things that we were talking about, um, right, when you're looking at your branding, not only is your color scheme and your logo important, but your fonts that you use too. A lot of people don't even think about that. What's your font? How do people realize that it's you? What makes you unique? You see, your branding can also make you very, very unique. What's your, what's your font? If you would ever realize, Shafet's font is the same thing on everything, even on the car. The one on the car is almost the same thing as the one on the, um, on the, on the board. Their brand, their font has been on point. Whoever does their branding, yeah, I can say it is very on point. Their marketing team is top notch, and as I said, you never compromise on your um on your brand and your images. What images you choose to put out there is very important, and the quality. If you want anybody to take you seriously, please don't take a picture of a product on the bed. Make sure that you are putting out quality items because I am going to think twice about your product if you take him a picture and send me of it on the bed. And when you put that image out there, persons are less likely to ask you to compromise. Because you I know you always realize that Frank Tyson, but you see you as a small business, they always ask you for a discount here, a discount. Here. <laughs> you, you always get asked for a discount. But if you make sure that you um, that you brand yourself properly, you will find people take you very seriously in what you're offering. They wait for your specials. You you won't really find that many persons out there saying, "But I want this from you. Sure. I want you to give me this discount." But even if they ask, you can take it as a customer query, a customer concern, a customer um, recommendation. All right. So, um, yeah, that is very important. We have another comment here, uh, a question from Tiana Adams. Uh-huh. Uh, Tiana said, I jumped into starting a t-shirt printing business and didn't go through with the legal setup as yet. Just getting my equipment first. I know well, that was not a good deal. I guess it was a comment. Well, Tiana, if you have started it and you try starting, let's look at it on the, let's look at the bright side, the silver lining. 
at least you're gathering some sort of experience. You're getting that spirit and doing it. You got your equipment, you got your t-shirt set up, but please look into the legislation even while you're doing it and while you're getting your training and while you're getting everything set up. And I mean, really and truly, it is, it is a good thing. T-shirts, funny enough, only two days ago, I saw someone on Instagram asking about a company that provides and prints the t-shirts. So even if that's something you can look into, are you just printing a shirt? Because let me just say, for my one, my family, we did a um, T-shirts for Christmas two years ago. And in doing this, the one thing that we found that was the hectic part for us was having to go and source the T-shirts and then having to try to get all of them to one person and then for the person to carry them to get them um, get them printed on. So if you can even look into creating a package where you offer the shirt and the, True. And the printing, that can be your unique something because you find a lot of printeries they don't really offer the ability for you to get the shirt. So True. even if you have that combo, you can offer for persons to bring their shirts, but always have that combo in there. And even in business, it's very important to always have that one thing that people see as valuable. And if you are looking to target certain persons, I am a very busy person. I may not have time. I definitely don't have time to be having to go and buy the shirt and then go out and take it to meet somebody. So you can also look at that. Um doing t-shirts. Right. So you can also look at that as part of your thing. Um Jamina put on her next comment. She actually just commented there. No, I'm doing t-shirts and personalized cups. I'm offering oh, okay see okay. so you're offering the t-shirts. So that's a good thing. That's value. So you can see that as one of your selling points when you're marketing. Right? Let persons know it's coming with the shirt. You just need to send us what your work is. Give us your idea. Are you doing the artwork also? Not to get deep into your business, guys, and not to push you all off of the thing, but it's just something that I'm looking at also for you. Looking at are you offering your, your artwork? What are you offering in your business? Always make sure when you're doing your advertising, also, you tell people what they're getting for their money. Always put what you want them to buy into. So you really want these people to look at the fact of the value, the worth of the products that they're getting from your company. And I see Tiana, someone's actually asking for the name of your company already. So you see, just like that, the Career Goals Club is beneficial to one lady in right. here already. <laughs> all right. So, right. So all of that is very important. And know that you know who your target is. You know all of this. You now have to turn that target into a client. So you know what are the necessities. You have already worked out the things that you would need to get in your business, your equipment, your resources, whatever it may be. You know your target market. You know who your competition is. You know the price range. You know all of this. You know your worth of your company. How do you turn this client, well, your target into a client? You have to look at how do you, the questions you need to now ask yourself also is, how do I communicate with, 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 this, with this, this, this target market, right? So what do they do? So that's why when I spoke to y'all earlier, I, I told you, look at the age, look at what they do, where they work, things like that is very important because when it comes to communicating with them, those are very important things in it. So what do they do? Where do they go? And when I say where do they go, you know, you go to the supermarket sometimes and you will find that there are screens in the supermarket. You can advertise there. You can go and you may realize this person eats at, um, oh dear, what's the name? Oh, the person eats at Shafat, since we've been using Shafat as a um, thing the whole day, the whole evening. The person eats at Shafat. Can I look at when it's a Shafat? And Brandon, is there somewhere outside the Shafat where I can put up a billboard? Is there somewhere near it on the way there? On the drive through, is there a pasture over the over the road from there? You know, there's so many different things. And there's even in Barbados. I know some of you are from all across the region, but yeah, it's um, from in Barbados, we have this thing called adopt a stop, right? And you may be driving along the highway and you're going to realize you are seeing a company advertising right on the side of your road. So if my people are eating at Shafat, I know that I want to go and adopt a stop right outside of Shafat. So I'm going to contact adopt a stop to try to get the, um, the kilometer right there for my advertising, right? So you need to look at where they're going. What do they do? 
um, and what platforms am I going to use to communicate with them? Right? I, you're right, Kobe. Thank you so much. Kobe was letting us know the the um the screens in the supermarket. They're called Screenplay. So you can contact them also if you want to do your marketing. I think they had some very reasonable packages also. Right. I, I, I would have spoken to them even for um someone already to try to get their prices and their their rates aren't too bad either. And they're all in the gas station. So you get a very wide reach with the screenplay in gas stations, you're in supermarkets, you're at shops, you're wherever, you're all over the place, right? But um right, finding out what platforms your targets use in order to make them into clients. So you'll realize, okay, like I said, social media has been working for us. And let's say we would realize that some of the older generation are still stuck on Facebook. They ain't really realize how to use Instagram fully as yet. So I know that my person that I'm trying to target, maybe 50, 50 40 something, they're on, they're on Facebook. And a lot of companies stopped using Facebook and started going all towards Instagram. That was that is a very big mistake. You need to utilize both of them. And funny enough, Google Ads guys utilize those also. Because if you want me, if you want to reach Mia, you know that you need to find Mia on possibly CNN. So when you go on Google Ads, you're able to tell Google Ads where you would like to have your um your ad advertising to websites that you would like to reach that you would like to have your um your ads on. So you need to find out where you want to, where you wanna, where your clients are. What platforms should you be using? Are you going to use LinkedIn? So if you're if you're offering something, maybe you're offering it to professionals. Exactly, Kobe. For older folks, Facebook is very essential. So whoever you're targeting, you need to find out what platforms they're using. And um, advice to anybody. Use all of them. Try well. You can't really use all, but Facebook and Instagram. If you are choosing between them, don't, because you would find that on Facebook you can you can promote your things on Facebook and Instagram. If you're only using Instagram, you can only promote on Instagram. I know it's funny, right? But yeah. So generally. You start up with your Facebook page and everything, and there are groups on Facebook. So um, you may have Trinidad buy and sell your stuff. You have got Barbados Marketplace. You got Soka Marketplace. You have so many things across the region because I have, I myself, because working with some of the regional brands, I myself would have joined some of these, these, um, these Facebook groups across the regions from the different countries because I know I want to target people in all of those. Um, those regions. So join these groups and you can start to put your things in these groups because I had this one person and they went and did that same thing in terms of going and put their product in these groups. And funny enough, they got more sales from Facebook than they got from Instagram. And they at one point I was only using Instagram. I had to say, no, you have to utilize Facebook. It's where you would realize you find more buyers on, in, on Facebook. Instagram, you work a little harder for your clients into buying I, I agree Instagram. with that, Patricia. I think Instagram people more like scroll. Yeah. Instead of people going on Instagram to scroll and look at content, like pictures or whatever, but the buying, I, mm -hmm. I agree with them on Facebook. Yeah, they're really on Facebook. So if you're doing dealing with your brand, um, wait, Tiana, what Tiana? I created my AG account and link it to my Facebook. Right. So if you're doing that, Tiana, that's very good because you will find do not I, I generally do not um only target I generally don't run my, my promotions from Instagram unless I know that I am doing it exactly with geo marketing. And that's something that you guys need to look into. As I say, I know we can't touch on everything, but geo marketing is very important. So you need to know exactly where your target is. So using Instagram, if I know that I want to run it on both of them, I may do, I would use Facebook. But if I know I'm directly targeting some of the younger generation, I'm going to use Instagram and put more money to the Instagram. And um, I will use real marketing. So I may know 
I want this to be very effective. So I'm going to target all of my persons in St. Michael. Right. St. Michael, we know St. Michael got good sad people, good sad young people and all that. I target saying all of these people in, in St. Michael between the ages of 17 to 30. I want y'all got 17 to 30 in St. Michael and you will realize your reach is far, is very, it's a lot. You get a wide reach with that. So, um, questions, one from Tiana. Yes, well, Tiana, if you do click on it to go, actually, if you are on Facebook and you scroll down, you there is an option. A lot of persons miss it because we go right through it, or whatever, and don't even really read it. Get enough. There is an option that says promote on Instagram. So if you're on Facebook, there's the opportunity that you can kill two birds with one stone. Sorry, if you're on Facebook, there's the opportunity to kill two birds with one stone. So on Facebook, you get to promote on both of them, both platforms for the same the same dollar or two dollars or how much ever you're going to put daily. You get to promote on both. But if you're on Instagram, sadly, you can only promote on Instagram. All right, there's another one down there on Jim. In regards to the book. Uh, the I think uh, I think she's saying be careful with apps because sometimes you get blocked from Instagram. Well, she means if you use which apps? What she she mean like if you use like um, right? So I I I know Jamila, you use one of them, right? I'm not sure you use a platform a app, right? Yeah, yeah, we use Hootsuite. Right. So generally, I I don't use them either, but Jamila has been using them, and I guess it's it's been quite effective for her. So, and I'm guessing right now, I guess yours, your um, Miss Zia. Okay. Okay. So her um her her comment, I guess we can use it as somewhat of advice. Depends so, on which I, I, it depends on uh, which. Use um ZR girl. Could you tell us what apps you use specifically? I will circle back to you. You can go on with the job. Right. So, right. So knowing the platforms that they're using is very important to target them. And as I said, your geo marketing that also is very important. Knowing where they are, who you want to target, to make sure that it's very effective. Especially if you're selling something, know exactly who you're targeting. And when you're looking at your business, always look at your growth, your growth strategy. And let's say you're in, into producing something. Let's say you're, you're producing juices. Some people look at their business and they look at their business so small. You know, you need to really have an open mind when it comes to your business. Do not think that your business is too small to make it anywhere. I know someone who's doing juices, natural juices. And they see the cells so small, like they, they can only do it at the side of the road. No, you can go and you can create a brand, a label, get your barcode, get everything sorted out. And you can start to look at sending your juices wherever. You can go and send your juices to New York. You have a, a clientele in New York. Let's say you're from Barbados. Make sure to target all those Bajans in New York and tell them that your drink from Barbados is coming because as much as they can make that drink home, then believe that that drink coming from Barbados, that drink different, you know. Facts. You got a whole clientele wherever it is you go. Right. So Kobe was actually shedding some light on the um on the the apps. Right. So I guess if you pay, you get quality. So if you pay and you buy into these um these apps that helps you with posting, you will get quality fair money. But if you're trying to only use free apps, I mean, come on, expect little glitches here and there too. True. Um, but yeah. So right, right. Talk about your growth. Have a plan. Know that your business can go from point A to point B. And generally, I have a. We are actually going to launch it this week. I'm not even sure if Tammy is on the live, but I know Tammy has been working on the um, the poster for us to get the course that has been helping persons with developing their business uh, started out. Getting that post started. Uh, so it's a brand development course. 
So it helps persons who already have a, a, a business and they just want to get it from point A to point B. They want to know how do I move it forward? We have something that looks like growing your um, growing your business, growing even if you just want to grow your customer interactions, you want to grow your sales, you just want to have an analysis. You need to analyze your business is first of all. It's very important. But yeah, we have um, courses that even help persons with that. And I won't even really call them courses. Let's just say mentorship programs because we help you work through it. And we have um, business training. And everything is done on an individual basis because uh, um, I just don't, I believe everyone needs to learn at their pace. And when it comes as something like business, it needs to be taken very seriously. So I see a lot of persons, I even when I launched my thing, some person said to me, but Khadija, look, some, this place is offering it free. You know, and someone said, oh, look, your social media course, somebody's offering it free. I said, but you know what? Everybody has to go in there and sit down in a webinar. What I offer is one-on-one, -on -one, ensuring that when you leave, you understand everything. You know that you can message me, you can get through to me. You know that don't matter what, you have a question, I'm going to help you through it. And you know that you have met someone who's going to be there that you can ask any questions to going forward, right? So, as I said, it's always about knowing the quality of what you're offering. So, yes, someone may be offering the same thing that I am offering free, but they want you to go and sit down on a webinar with 10 or 10,000 people from all across the world, you know? So, when I offer something, I offer it. All of my courses are offered, or my mentorship programs. Let me go back to that word. That offers. <laughs> my mentorship programs are all offered on an individual basis, guys. So, you can go on our, um, follow our page because in the coming weeks, we're going to be offering the courses. We're going to be launching them, the programs. <laughs> I keep saying these courses. We're going to be offering these, um, these programs to help you guys um, go forward. Yes, Tisha, personalized, exactly. Personalized attention is very important. So I really believe in making sure one-on-one -on -one because I, I believe like how I go to school, I went to school for every day, every single day. And I still got to come home and teach myself something. We're going to be sitting there in lecture theaters for hours, for a whole day. And we got to come home and go on YouTube for one on one sessions to learn things. So it's just generally that, um, that right, exactly, Rhea. So it's just those, um, those little things. I keep up to the industry. When you say my industry, Zaria, oh, she's speaking to, oh. Um, how do you kill it? So when you say my industry, what are you referring to? Because if you mean in terms of what we are offering, you can follow both Jamila and myself. Jamila is the HR boss, our career goals club on Instagram. And I am on Instagram also as Caribbean Women in Business. And guys, as I said, send us an email, send an email to either Jamila or myself. I am willing to help you guys in developing. And as I said, the courses are coming, so it's going to help you guys. And Rhea, no, Zaria. Zaria, what about those what about those in the preparation stage? The preparation stage is very important. So one of the business planning that we are offering that helps persons that are in the planning stage, looking at all those things like what is your vision and everything we would have discussed this evening that is very vital so you got what, what you need your vision the things you need your target your competition how to analyze your competition what are the things to look for in your competition what are the things that you need to look for in starting your business from yourself and i will always say to anybody be very real with yourself know yourself because business to be motivated every day is not easy I can tell anybody so, and it's very important to have those people in your life. So I may pick up the phone, I can go and call my mother and I can tell my mother I want to do this, I want to do that. And my mother can hear me, and my mother can ask me questions. So generally have that person or those persons and be very careful also with who those persons are in your life. Make sure that this person has the, 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 um, the openness for your growth. Because if you tell your idea to someone who is not there for you, I, you, you are not going to see yourself as capable. And you're not going to directly believe in yourself. You're going to start to have doubts. So always, um, always have someone who's there for you. So even in our course, part of our course is to have a focus group. So when we help you develop your business, 
we're going to have people like possibly even Jamila who will be there to listen to what your idea is. Listening to what your idea is to say, well, yeah. So we look at who your target is and we pull some of those persons to get them into your focus group so that you can discuss your business plan and you know exactly what your customers want or what your target wants because you don't know everything. I don't know everything. And that is the harsh reality and something that we need to accept. So you want to start your business, you got to understand that you're not starting, you're not starting it for you. You're starting it for someone. You're filling someone's need. That's why, that's why at the beginning, one of the things that I said to you guys was what is the purpose of your business? Who are you targeting? What problem are you solving? What benefits are you offering? Because you need to know. You need to know who these persons are to be thinking. Oh, what do you think is a good budget as it relates to marketing to start with as a small business? Okay, Miss Noel. So generally, the marketing is very reasonable on social media. Go and get your Visa debit card. Go to First Caribbean. Go to wherever you buy and get a Visa debit card. On social media, you can market for as little as a one US dollar a day. Okay. Once you make sure that, then then that's why I spoke to you about the geo marketing. Know where your target is so that you spend your money in the right way. So um. So if you are looking and you are looking to figure out what your target, what what is the good budget, you can put fifty dollars a month. Fifty dollars a month can get you your target, can get you a reach, it can get you to speak to someone. You know, as a small business, it can get you somewhere. So if you're starting, you don't need to have a three hundred and a five hundred dollar um um. You don't need to have. I want to read what Kobe said. Like, I can't see it right now. You don't need to have that much of a market in this space. Hey, do want to go to this new media during this year. Well, well. So you can also go to the nation or any of those um those views whole less. You can you can put your marketing in the paper also, but for small businesses, I would always recommend using social media. And as I said, Facebook allows you to market on both Instagram and social media. Use that. Google Ads. Google Ads help you to market on web, on websites. Use that. YouTube. Guys, I don't know if y'all realize, but y'all are on YouTube. And every how much ever seconds, you got to see, uh, you have to watch an ad. And if you don't want to watch that ad, you got to pay. And we as Caribbean people, we ain't paying for that. We watching that ad for those three or four seconds. We ain't paying for, to not watch ads. Correct. So Google offers ads, YouTube, to utilize YouTube ads. All right, guys? So know that that is one way for sure that you gain visibility. And that in itself is also cheap. I'm telling you guys, right now, it is your time to start businesses. At least we are not in the stage now where we got to be going and pay the nation $300 or $150 to put something in the paper. Oh, no, you can sorry Kobe. So you can you can go and you can do it with as well as five or ten dollars, right? All right, so Sam is putting something here. What is the best way to start a business from idea to paper to actual from idea to paper to actual business? Right. So that's why even when I started this thing, I said from idea to reality. You do not, and when I started, I say you don't need to have everything. All figured out, and I'm not sure if Melissa is on here, but I was even telling Melissa so the other day. You do not need to have everything all figured out, guys. So from idea, you know you have your idea. Look at the simple things that we were to talk about today. What's the vision for my company? I know in five years I would like my company to be where, and when you have answered that, you will realize everything is going to start falling in place. Because I know that in five years, my juice company, I would like to have my juices in, in as a regional something. I want to have my juices international. So what I got to do to get there, I know I got to read these legislations for sure. As Kim alerted us too, we need to have the legislation sorted out. We need to see what's on our labeling. So we have to do research. But we also need to know 
What do I need to start up? What equipment do I need? And I know that in five years, I want to have this. I know I need to be producing mass, a mass amount because I still have to, to service my local market. And now I'm trying to go big and I ain't sending five juices big. I know I got to send a lot. So what am I doing for my operations? How am I going to grow my operations? I know that I am going to need possibly more equipment. So generally, you will start to look at the things that you need when you know what your vision is right so sam from going from paper going from an idea to paper start with what is your vision for your company and you are going to start to just go and start your business plan is going to start flowing or your let's say your vision board because that's what i like to call it because some people go and they look for a business plan and they see this big long thing come up they're going to get a template and this this 11 page write up come up no I personally, I don't follow that because I am a person that likes to go based on what I know, what I want to do and everything. I like things right in front of me. And that whole long write-up, I will send that if I'm sending off that as a proposal to someone. But right. when it comes to me and what I know I want from my business, I want to see everything. And I start with what my vision is as the forefront. And then I can come down. So it is my, this whole, how am I going to get this achieved? I need to know what my, um, what my vid, what my uh what my target who my target market is what are my expenses who am i going to get people over there to buy into it so what is not going to be my marketing strategy what is my what are my strengths and weaknesses so you look at all those things you gotta do all these swat uh swat analysis you need to know but everything starts to fall into links honey okay guys so, yeah. In to wrap up, uh, we're going to take two more questions and we're going to ask Khadija just to summarize what she has to offer you guys in her new upcoming mentorship program. And then the, the I guess we could further discuss it in the Career Goals Club on our page. Once you're in as a member, it's absolutely free to join. We'll discuss it there. Great. So as a small business, how do you deal with disappointment? With my startup, I'm running into some issues and it's discouraging some things. So... The truth, the truth about the matter is there are ups and downs in business. Sometimes you may have clients and next thing, next day you look around, you ain't got none. And it just may be the fact that someone took you out. Your competition took you out and you didn't realize it. So you need to continuously look at your offer. You need to continuously audit yourself and you need to continuously audit your business. So how do I continue? to create value and the truth is do not give up give your business at least three years three years to look and to to grow all right do not give up on your business but in those three years make sure that you are always looking for ways to bring in new clients you're always looking for ways to improve all of those things tiana so don't don't take disappointments and don't let it get you down and do not be discouraged Continuously look for ways to grow that will help you, um, to help to keep you encouraged. So even if it is finding new clients, use marketing. As I always say, marketing is going to help you. Use um, use your marketing to continuously try to reach clients, communicate with them, and that is going to start to show you where you are. And as I said, the focus group, very important because you may realize that you're running into problems, but you're not creating the value that those people want. You're creating what you want, or you're creating what you think people want. So that's why I said in our in our offering, we are offering a focus group because it's going to be who your target is. So you need to know who your target is, guys, and how you know how, what they want, how to communicate with them, and stuff like that. Go on. What's going on? Okay, so what do you do to keep up to date with what's going on in, on in the marketing industry? So the good thing about marketing is that it's marketing. So it's always going to be put out there, right? That's the whole thing of marketing, making it go viral, making sure it's out there. But I always go and I do courses because I never think that I know enough. No matter what I know, no matter what I do, I will go and do a refresher course. That's the honest truth. I go and I look into how people are marketing in different countries. And um, I don't know if y'all ever hear of something such as guerrilla marketing or guerrilla marketing. Guys, come on. I go and I do so much reading up and stuff like that. And 
I remember when it I, when it came, well, so called came to Barbados, because I'm not sure if it was actually here. I know it was in Trinidad, I think it was, when Sajid Carr did the car coming out of the building. Guys, there are things like that. You need to continuously keep up with the trends. And I do a lot of research in order to do that. And a lot of market analysis, finding out what people think, what people say, communicate with your peers, your simple peers will help you to know how to how to go about your business. I love that comment, Alexis. Yep, 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 yep. I like that. Can you tell us about your upcoming mentorship program and kind of uh, just give us a wrap up in totality of um, right. your points today? Okay, so guys, so what we're going to be offering, we have a social media um, for business course. That course is only 10 US dollars. It helps you going through how to um, go about um, marketing, how to go about using social media for marketing, looking at your target, finding out who your target market is. It use Facebook, Instagram, you learn how to read your insights, um, the usefulness of the insights, you get to do geo marketing and we get to do um, monthly updates. So for anybody who's looking for a little small business, there that's marketing is also always the way to go. As long as you learn how to offer um, mar uh, marketing services, you have a, you are in a business, right? So that is one of the courses. The second one that we are offering is um, business. Oh, let me get this thing. Business planning and the business planning is only 20 US and that helps you with looking into what your business will be offering, helping you with social media, um, understanding your business, who your target market is, all those different little things. And the last one will be brand development and brand development will encompass everything in terms of growth, sales, everything. And that one is 40 US dollars and that that is a full, full course. So it also teaches you how to use social media for marketing. So by the time you're finished, you're going to have at least what your um, know your business, what you're going to be offering. But please know, we are not building your business for you. We are not your business. We are offering you mentorship and helping you to get there. And in all of these courses, well, except for the social media one, in the business planning and in brand development, Guys, we are uh, we offer the focus group and everything. As I said, it's all inclusive in that price in that focus group. As I said, we will look for your target market. We will seek out people. You will you will go in. You will talk with them, and everything is on a one on one basis. And you get to find out what you need for your business. So those are uh, those are our um, courses. The three things that we will be offering um, in terms of what we touched on today. It's about bringing your, your idea to reality. So you need to know, I got getting a little feedback, Jamila. So anyway, you need to know what you would need for your business, what startups you would need. You need to be real with yourself to find out if this is something you're going to want to do going forward. Uh, what's the purpose of your business? What makes you different? What makes you unique? What benefits, what emotional something are you touching on? Um, and Knowing your competition, what are they offering? What sets you apart from them? Uh, what are their prices? And what? So I remember, never compromise on your value. Know your value, okay? And your target. So your gender, age, what they do, how you communicate with them, your marketing, all of that is very important. So guys, as long as you guys um, can send me an email, you can send me an email, send Jamila an email. Jamila can forward them over to me. But I will be willing to help you guys. Any other little questions you have, I do not charge for your questions. Guys, let me put that out there. We are all here to help one another. I am here to help you and help your business in any way that I can. As I say, I may not know everything, but we do try to work with you in helping you um, in developing your business to the best of our ability. Okay, guys? So, Jamila? Khadija, this has been fantastic. Um, I'm hoping everybody enjoyed the session today as much as I did. Um, this is the first in our weekly sessions on the Career Goals Club. The club is absolutely free to join. So just follow us on Instagram at careergoals.club. And you will just um, click the link in the bio, apply to join. Um, the, the club is only for Caribbean citizens. So even if you're living in the diaspora, diaspora, the club is open to you. So you can sign up for Career Goals Club. 
at first it was only females, but now we are we've accepted males as well. So if you're a male and you're on the label, I know Darren is here. Darren Kobe's already in club, so you can join us at the Career Goals Club. Thank you very much, Khadija. This was very informative. Um, on the screen so we're looking forward to seeing you guys next week sunday right so thank you very much any additional questions you can post in the club and we will forward them to khadija so thank you everybody for joining us today thank you guys